Jeff Merkley, senator from uh, Oregon, who at one point I thought like, you know, there was some talk when they were when there was real, uh, I think, uh, frustration with Chuck Schumer. Merkley uh, was floated as a potential um, Senate majority leader at that time. But that, um, that would have been nice. He's that definitely been nice. to the left of Schumer. Yeah. Um, here's Senator Jeff uh, Merkley from Oregon. Uh, like I say, on Tuesday, um, bemoaning the fact that um, that Biden's sort of failures on climate and there's been successes. But the problem with trying to measure out successes and failures is that that's not going to cut it. We can't have uh, two steps forward, one step back. That's not up going down by 40. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the clock is ticking on this. And here's Jeff Merkley. Biden need a primary challenger to push him on this issue. Well, it, it, it probably wouldn't hurt if there was a, an, an, an activist who had a very clear reputation and a, a solid grassroots connection to be in the campaign to be making uh, these points. But realize President Biden at this point really does have the primary tied up. Uh, the major environmental groups uh, endorsed early. They were afraid that a challenger would undermine President Biden the way, say, Ted Kennedy's campaign uh, damaged Jimmy Carter's re-election. So labor is already on board. Reproductive rights groups are on board. Uh, major environmental groups are on board. I think um, what we're seeing now is the president uh, has the primary uh, well in hand but those climate groups that did that early endorsement, they should go back and say, you don't want just our endorsement. You want our activists knocking on door. You want the Sunrise Movement of youth to be passionately excited about your campaign. It is pivot now. Say no to any more fossil project. Uh, so there it is, Jeff Merkley uh, basically bemoaning the fact that there is no um, serious climate um, uh, primary challenge. Now, of course, Marion Williamson has very good positions on the on the climate, but there's no there's no uh, she has no relationship uh, or I should say institutional relationship or history of having any deep connections with the climate movement. Mm -hmm. um, and RFK, I mean. Oh, the free market will solve this. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, the climate the, candidate. <laughs> if there was anyone, I mean, what's fascinating about his uh, primary challenge is he's not running at Joe Biden from the left yeah. on really anything. No. I mean, um, I suppose one could argue that somehow uh, running, not, not providing uh, aid to Ukraine is somehow to the left on this issue, but I, I just don't know that that's really uh, that. You, I do not. Agree. First of all, no. first of all, it's also uh, arguably a, uh, a libertarian position. I'm sure Rand Paul would subscribe to this. Um, and so I don't know that Kennedy is doing that from the left, per se, to be honest with you. I mean, it's very hard to square that with his um, what he considers more aggressive defense of Israel's actions in uh, in the occupied territories uh, than he said most Democrats. So, I mean, he's running to the right on that issue of occupation uh, than most Democrats. You could argue that his position on Ukraine is uh, to the left of Biden's, but it's not from a left perspective. It is more mm -hmm. from a libertarian perspective. I mean, that has happened. The libertarians uh, and uh, leftists would agree uh, decriminalize drugs. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're both doing it from a leftist perspective. It just means that both these ideologies happen to have it. The problem is, is what comes with the rest of that um, libertarian ideology, like uh, Emma says, um, he believes that the free market can solve climate change as if there has been some significant inhibition of the free market, unless he's talking about some fantastical world where there is no, uh, you know, I mean, getting rid of subsidies for fossil fuels, yes. But the fact is, we need to subsidize 
things like solar, things like uh, wind power. If we need to nationalize to the oil and gas industry too. I mean, yeah. look, like that's shut not it down, right? Like to the extent that we like need to um, approve like certain projects because like we just haven't transitioned off of this stuff so much. It should not be profited by private companies. This should be a uh, like Uncle Sam initiative. I mean, well, I, the it, problem. You, go yeah, ahead. no, it's just it, the idea that that though he has any real positions that are to the left of Biden that I have seen. I think it's fanciful. It's just like you know when you're a wrecker candidate essentially, or you're working with people that are interested in causing chaos in the Democratic Party. You're gonna you're gonna make the the positions um, of what like the left really stands for as muddled and as as confusing as possible i mean like we went through this let's be real with the jimmy door i'm further left than you because of x y and z biden's more fascist than trump it can it it it, it makes those words meaningless and that's it, part of the part of the agenda let's be i real. mean I, I i aside from bemoaning the fact that he didn't uh, that that kennedy was not that person who was going to try and push um biden left on climate or I don't even know you. I mean, I don't even know if you can call that left uh, necessarily. Is just sort of more sensibly on on climate. I I don't have much evidence that Robert Kennedy is running to appeal to uh, leftists or Democrats for yeah. that matter. I mean, his name uh, attracts a lot of Democratic support. I mean, I guess it's around ten uh, to. I've seen it uh, as high as fourteen, fifteen uh, points, but. It is very, I am like really hard pressed outside of like, I guess you could say good government stuff in the, uh, in some agencies, but there's no structural reform there. And he doesn't seem to be highlighting those uh, issues either. Um, he doesn't seem to be running a campaign to attract Democratic votes. I mean, I know that he was drafted by Bannon and Stone to be a chaos agent in the Democratic primary, but he's not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's oh. not. He's not even doing that. Well, I know. Um, even the COVID stuff, like that's not even that active in the Republican primary anymore. They all kind of want to move on from that too. And in the Democratic primary, I think it's insane. It's a, it's not a, it's he, not a, it's a crazy th position to have. Yeah. It does not feel like he's running. I mean, I know the, I, I my assumption too is that you know to the extent that uh, Bannon and Stone want him to run, he wants to run it. They want him to run as a chaos agent in the Democratic Party. I don't know what his intentions are, but. If I was going to run as a chaos agent in the Democratic Party, I wouldn't do I, I would do the exact opposite of what he's doing. His polls have gone down since he entered the race. Well, and eventually it, he'll the, leave and and I don't know, he'll make he'll try to make some sort of pivot, but in terms of a climate candidate though just to Merkley's point to to put a bow on it, um it really should be somebody who is completely intertwined with someone like the Sunrise Movement, who understands that th there's nobody who's going to defeat defeat Biden in a primary at this point. It's a, a message-driven issue can uh, candidate to push him in that direction. And that's why I've been pretty ambivalent to somewhat critical about some of the camp, like including Marianne Williamson's campaign or like it, it, some stuff that I perceive as kind of vanity campaigns, because if we're going to have primary challenges, I want them pegged to specific issue sets and activist groups, right. uh, you know, it, it, because that is the reality of like what the value of a primary challenge is with an incumbent. Um, the, the, there's there's not really a realistic path to overtaking, I would say, the, the, the incumbent in the primary. But if you can change the way that that candidate approaches certain issues, that's the best path forward, in my opinion. Uh, to, I would argue that, I mean, uh, certainly that's what uh, Bernie entered the campaign in 2016. It caught fire. He didn't think that he had a chance of winning at the beginning of that thing. And then uh, he reacted too late, in my opinion. With all that said, uh, Bernie's 2016 campaign, as much as his 2020 campaign, although I would argue the, 20, the 2020 campaign as well, both of those campaigns um, had Joe Biden uh, created a different Joe Biden than yes. existed uh, 20 or 30 years ago. They didn't create a, you know, a, a Bernie Sanders in Joe Biden. But um, you did have a guy who's now, you know, as kludgy as it is, um, uh, you know, uh, making 
essentially putting into effect a student debt cancellation of about $360 billion, uh, or not, not, um, not sufficient, but certainly um, a, a step that I don't think he would have taken without, um, without Bernie Sanders in 2016 and 2020. Um, and to some extent as well, uh, Warren, certainly all the uh, antitrust stuff, a 40, 50 year now uh, shift from where antitrust has been since 1980s is a function of Elizabeth Warren, uh, you True. know, in that campaign. And so um, uh, the the primary challenges are important, even if they don't win. Um, and so uh, it, it is. But they have to be strategic. And I think they could still be used by, uh, you know, like um, Gen Z for Change had an activist interrupt a Karine Jean-Pierre press conference and say, hey, respectfully, uh, asking nicely uh, hasn't worked. And uh, that that group, Gen Z for Change, used to be TikTok for Biden. And now they're realizing they're in the news in May saying, hey, it's a hard sell because you're not giving us much. Right. And uh, also uh, Sunrise Movement itself, like, didn't endorse Biden um, ahead of the election, but said, like, look. This is the best. We're going to actually put people behind him because this is the only like if Trump wins again, we don't have any actual movement. We can't even pretend like we want to um, yeah. do anything and, and we can't even shame them. Um, and I think all those groups are I think it's really smart. I, I think they should withhold the endorsement. I think obviously, ultimately, it's gonna, probably going to be Biden. Right. But just to hold it open so the news can come back to you. Like I like I think the union should do it as well and let like these even though I think we have a frankly not great compared to like the Bernie um, primary challenges, like we don't have a great crop, at least say like, hey, we're listening to all the different candidates out there and you have to speak to us rather than like jumping behind Biden right away. And now all of a sudden it's nullified, make right? Him, make them come to you. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and like they should want to, they should want to have that news story where we're actually giving something away instead of, oh, we have them in our, I mean, this is a little bit idealistic, but we have them in our back pocket. We're going to go um, um, triangulate with the Republicans now.